So today what I'd like to do is show you how to quickly, well relatively quickly, uh, take in an Adobe Illustrator map, a map maybe perhaps you made in ArcGIS and exported as an, an AI file, and bring it into Adobe Flash, kind of organize it, and perhaps add some rollover effects or animation and export it. So I'm going to record this in a series of steps and the this video is just basically going to show you how to open or bring in rather import an AI file into Adobe Flash. So the first thing you need to do is open Adobe Flash. Now I have Adobe Flash CS6, CS7 is about to come out, uh, the labs right now have CS5. Basically everything I'm about to show you is the same in every version of Flash. Um, certain menu items may have moved slightly, but everything I'm showing you has been consistent since about 2004 or so. So once you open Flash, also I'm on a Mac, but essentially it's, it's largely the same, so bear with me here. When you open Flash, it's just like any other Adobe product. You get a splash screen allowing you to create new things or create things from templates. Uh, over here on the left, you can create apps for Android or um, iPhone iPhone uh, apps, etc. You, you write in Flash, export them, and put them on the market. That's a little beyond us right now. Right now we just need to learn how to use Flash. In general, when you're creating Flash, what you'll want to do whenever you create a new file is click on ActionScript 3.0. That's the latest version of their scripting language that you can use in Flash. ActionScript 2.0 uh, is an older version. It's also useful but quite different. Um, so generally you'll want to do this. So let's click here. And when you click here, sorry, I'm going to try to get this. Okay. When you click here, what you see are uh, kind of the standard Adobe style uh, of layout of a, a program. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview. On the right, you have a, a variety of palettes, and yours might be slightly differently organized. If I go up to Window and go to um, Workspace, you can choose your workspace. I'm going to choose Flash Essentials. You choose Flash Animator. It'll set it up for someone who's into animation. Designer, which I fashioned myself as. So depending on how you have it lined up, this is what it's going to look like. Actually, I'm going to go with Flash Designer just because I see the palettes I need. No, I'm not. Sorry about that. I'm going to go with Essentials because this is what most of you will have. So over on the right, you have a bunch of palettes, just like you do in all these Adobe programs these days. Um, different palettes that you can use, etc. Um, the tools and essentials are also on the right. They can be moved to the left if you prefer them over here. Um, and they can be shrunken down, etc. Uh, I'm going to, oh dear, what have I done? I'm going to keep them on the right. But these are tools. These are for directly manipulating objects. And then you have your panels here. On the bottom, you have you have what's called a timeline, a motion editor, an output thing, etc. Um, most important down here is the timeline. Now, to give you a little summary of Flash, you can think of it as Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator with a timeline. So what Flash allows you to do is create animations to animate your graphic arts programs. And down here what you see are numbers. These represent frames. If you think of animation as as a series of frames presented to you rapidly so you see movement, what we are going to do is, is whereas when you have a static image you have one picture drawn on Illustrator. In Flash you're going to um, have multiple pictures that change throughout time, right? And so just like an animation you have so many frames per second to create the illusion of something moving. So down here, you know, we could have the hundreds, even thousands of frames. It starts off with, looks like 110 on my computer frames for you to, to draw. Another point to make about Flash, it's a vector arts program. So whereas Photoshop is raster, um, meaning picture like pixel based, um, Illustrator is vector, Flash is also vector. Now this has benefits and drawbacks. If, you, if someone on your website is using a Flash map and they zoom in, it won't pixelate if it's if it's vector art. You can import raster images, you can import pictures into Flash, but everything you draw within Flash will be vector art. So let's look at some of these tools over here. Um, we, we have 
a variety of tools. We've got the text tool and the properties dialog here is probably your um, most important dialog. This is where you can change, no matter what tool you're using, you can change a variety of attributes about it. Think of it as kind of the properties dialog you find at the top of Adobe Illustrator. It's um, This is very similar in that regard. So we can take text and choose a font family, let's say, you know my favorite, Corbell. And we can choose the size. You can just click and drag on a lot of these menu items. We'll call this our first test map. All right. Notice it's center aligned right now. Um, down here, you can click on these little tabs to get more options. I want to make this left aligned, spacing, etc. Um, so just like, just like many other Adobe products, you, you have a lot of control over what you're drawing and, and creating. Maybe make that bold, give it a color of uh, blue, etc. So all your little things are down here. One other thing I want to show you really quickly is a lot of objects in the properties dialog have this thing called filters. And filters, if you go down here, you can add a new filter are kind of um, effects in, in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. So I want to add a drop shadow. I can do that. I can, first actually I have to highlight all this, I think. Create a drop shadow, high quality. Um, well, I don't know why it's not showing up, but Lord knows. There we go. And so now, just like that, we've created a drop shadow. If I select this text and click on the drop shadow here, I can change it. That's a little bit too far. Click and drag here to make it less or more blurry and to make the distance a bit less. There we go. Don't like the size of that. Go back up to character size. and make this bigger. All right, so we've got our title, basically. Um, other things you can do over here, pen tool, just like an illustrator, it's Bezier, whatnot, you can change the stroke. A couple things do behave differently, though, that need to be mentioned. Um, but I'll draw a couple more things for you here, oval, Right, that's not an oval, I guess. Um, okay, so a couple things do behave differently. In Illustrator, when you select an object, it selects the whole object. If I click on this rectangle I just drew, it only selects the right-handed line here. If I hit the delete key, it deletes only that part. I'm undoing that. If I double-click on the outline, it selects the entire outline, but it doesn't select the interior. If I click delete, it only deletes the outline. If I select the middle, again, it selects the middle. But if I double-click the middle of something, it'll select the middle and its outline. So these are slightly different, um, I guess you could say, different methods of interacting with your graphic arts. And though at first it can be very confusing because you click on something and it only selects a part, you'll see how it's empowering in a second. Let's say that I want to delete part of this line and in Illustrator, I'd have to get the scissors tools or something and click on the different nodes. Notice there are no nodes now. And actually, this is an unfortunate color because you can't really see. Um, this might be better. So there are no nodes on this object. What it does is it highlights it all. Nodes are gone. So you can draw with Bezier curves, but you can't go back in and edit them um, at all, as far as I know. Maybe they've changed that. But for deleting, it's very fun. To delete something, you just select it, and if I go drag a box like this and select and hit delete, it deletes between the lines. If I want to get rid of that, I can delete like that. If I go here, I can um, make this none, rounded, etc. What is that weird thing? I think that's just a remnant. Don't panic, people. I'm going to make this none, hit delete. So you can actually really, you actually have some more control over how you delete and shape objects. But it can be very frustrating if you're so used to Illustrator. So keep this in mind as you're going through. Um, 
that, you know, if you select like this and hit delete, it's not going to delete everything. Up here, again, um, if you want to delete one section, that's fine. If you want to only change the color of one side, it's really easy, etc. Um, and if we just want to go like this and hit delete, we have to make these none. You get kind of cool shapes. So in some ways it's empowering, and in some ways you'll find it's extremely frustrating. But that is one way that it's quite different. Um, you have a lot of the other tools that you have in, in Illustrator. And I don't want to beat a dead horse here. You have the paint bucket tool, which can be very useful for if you're in a hurry and you want to change the color of something. You can just grab the paint bucket tool, click on anything, and it will change the fill color. Now notice, if I click on the line, nothing happens. Um, fills don't work with lines. There is an ink bottle tool, however, which you can use to change the colors and styles of the lines. And it's hidden here under the paint bucket tool. So these are some simple editing features of Adobe, Adobe Flash. And this is basically, there's also an eraser tool. This is basically the start of your Flash experience. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import an Adobe Illustrator map. And so you can start tweaking it and editing it in here. And uh, then we're going to add some interactive features to it.